British Prime Minister Theresa May will call for unity Wednesday when she addresses the House of Commons about Brexit. On Tuesday, May signed the official letter to the European Council president, which will trigger the UK's withdrawal from the European Union. May said leaving the EU is only part of her vision for Britain's economic success. For my plan for Britain is not just a plan to leave the EU, but a plan to build a stronger economy and a fairer society underpinned by genuine economic and social reform to make Britain a country that works for everyone, not just a privileged few. For more on Brexit Day, let's go to John Author, Senior Investment Commentator for the Financial Times. John, thanks for joining us. Well, it's a great pleasure to be with you. So first explain what is happening on Wednesday and what happens next. OK, well, what's happening on Wednesday is the moment when we actually finally, formally start the process of uh, the great divorce from Europe. Uh, it's going to be a two-year process from this point, but up until now, last summer's very dramatic referendum was only ever technically uh, a, a consultative bind uh, referendum. It wasn't strictly binding, so you needed to have a bill go through both Houses of Parliament. You had to have the Queen give her consent. It would have been a major deal if she hadn't. Uh, and now, finally, uh, Mrs May is signing the papers telling Europe that we are going to be going. Now, that's officially... Uh, there is no provision in the law for us to go back on that at this point. But we do have a full two years to negotiate the terms of that divorce. And all the, uh, all the signs are that we will need every minute of those two years to, uh, to sort it out because European law has been written directly into uh, British law all the way back to 1973. It's going to be a very complicated process. And so just uh, to be clear, once Article 50, as it's called, is triggered, then the UK has essentially reached the point of no return? According to the law, yes. It's still, I suppose, a possibility. But the likelihood is now well over 90% that Britain is going to be outside of the Eurozone uh, in two years from now. So some prominent figures who wanted to stay in the EU, including mm. David Cameron, predicted that there would be an economic crisis if the UK yes. voted to leave. What has been the reality of that picture? The reality is certainly not a crisis thus far. And in fact, British consumers appear to have more confidence now than they did before the referendum, obviously a sign that uh, Brexit is popular. So spending has risen. The biggest issue will be inflation. The pound has uh, dropped very dramatically in value. We're already seeing inflation pick up, which is what you'd expect, because that will make imports more expensive. Uh, we can't still say for sure that we're not going to get a serious economic slowdown out of this process. But certainly the, the fears of an economic crisis haven't come to pass. Definitely so, not. You talk about inflation. What mm. other possible effects could there be as a result of this, uh, both on the European mm. Union and Britain moving forward? Well, in the case of the European Union, it sets a precedent that you can leave it, which is an inf incredibly important precedent that weakens the whole notion of this big, strong trading block that they want to project. For the UK, the big issue is trade. At the moment, we have an extremely good deal on all the trade we do with continental Europe. It is not going to be the same. We have already decided that we're not even going to try to stay in what's known as the single market, uh, where there are no tariffs at all and where there's a very complicated set of standards to enable uh, very similar products across borders. That had been a very big benefit. That could be very damaging for the uh, UK economy. And it could also be very damaging for the uh, very considerable American interests in the uh, in the UK. There's a lot of American investment in Britain. Yeah, and so a little bit more on that. Uh, Brexit yeah. is, as you know, a move that has been welcomed by this yes. White House. So how do you anticipate that this could affect US-British relations? It's going to be a very complicated process. As it stands at the moment, the UK now needs the US in a way that it hasn't done before. I mean, obviously, there's always been a, a great need for US support on uh, in areas of defense. But now that we don't have the uh, strength that comes from being part of that huge trading block, the EU, the full EU is bigger even as, as an economy than the US, it becomes that much more important that we maintain good relations with the US. The latest polls I've seen see that there is quite a strong reaction against Mr. Trump as well. Even people who are in favor of Brexit don't think it's, uh, 
it's President Trump's business to tell us whether we should be leaving the EU or not. From the US perspective, there are huge um, US corporate interests in the UK. Uh, and secondly, it's not at all clear how easy it will be for, for the US to maintain its relationship that it's had with, uh, with uh, the UK. Before Mr. Trump, it's been very definite uh, American policy that they wanted the British to stay in the EU. So this will complicate US foreign relations and US diplomacy that they don't have such a close friend as the UK inside the European Union anymore. All right, John Authors, thank you very much for your insight. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you.